The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater, Incorporated, presents The Music of a Broken Bell, starring Otto Kruger and Sigrid Gurry. Pedro de Cordoba is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. You know, we sometimes little appreciate the blessings we have until we lose them. The blessings of good health and peace of mind. The blessing of having sufficient for our daily needs. The blessings of friendship. Isn't it so easy to take things for granted? And that can be true in a home more than any place else. We can expect so much and be little appreciative of all that we have. Yes, God is good to all of us in so many ways. And the last thing any one of us can afford to do is to take God for granted. That's why we say, make prayer a daily practice and pray together with your family. Thank God as a family for what you have and ask his help because nothing can bring a family together in peace and understanding like the practice of daily family prayer in your home. Pedro de Cordoba will return following tonight's family theater story, The Music of a Broken Bell, starring Otto Kruger and Sigrid Gurry, with Barry Kruger as narrator. So you say, when things are broken, let them be thrown away. That is how you have operated, John Eddington Pierre. It seems by far the best way. No waste of time, no inefficiency. We make progress. And to you, men and materials were always very much the same. If I had stopped to worry about everyone's difficulties, I'd still be a checking clerk in the island of Hawaii. You have made progress since then. I think I can say I've done well getting out of the island, starting my own exporting firm here in California, Yes, I have done very well. John! Yes, Marie? John! What are you doing, sitting here in the dark? Eh? Well, I guess I hadn't noticed. It became dark very quickly this evening. I was thinking. Thinking? About what? Oh, business, mostly. I'm surprised you'd be worrying about business. Why, only yesterday you said things could not be more successful. Yes, that is true, but I wasn't worrying. I was just thinking. Oh, I see. Uh, John, there mm -hmm. is a man outside who wants to see you. He says it's urgent. Who? Well, he would not give his name. I told him to wait until tomorrow and see you at your office, but he said no. It must be tonight. You know that I want no one to disturb me when I am home. Now send him away. Oh, but he seemed... Oh, I was afraid. I thought... No, no. Marie, put on the light, huh? My dear, you are very beautiful. Oh, thank you. No, no, come. What, what are you afraid of? What does this man want? Well, I think he's from the islands. He seems a rough oh, sort of... Oh, yes, and he frightened you, didn't he? I was afraid, for your sake. Well, well, we shall see him then. Nihui! You! What brings you from Honolulu here to my home? I am in trouble, Mr. Pierre. Well, why do you come to me? Oh, you can't help me. I must have $100,000 immediately. Oh, my, you, you talk like someone in a story. You must have $100,000. My <laughs> ship was lost with all its cargo. But you were insured, so now you come to me with... Only it. for half its value. Uh. If I do not get this money, my warehouse will be sold. I have no other collateral. I shall lose everything. Then you made a bad investment. I have once told you, Nihui, never to trust anyone. For when you need them most, you will discover... But it is not my fault. The storm, I could not keep a ship from sinking. I need your help. I have only ten days left to raise the money. I came I here. am sorry, Nihui. This is not my way to do business. If you say you want to sell your warehouses now, I will talk. But then I would be wiped out. Once I offered you a good price and you refused. Now maybe you will talk a new price, eh? Say $10,000. You are a hard man, Pierre. If it is business, that's the only way. Everyone for himself. But sometime you cannot help yourself. 
sometimes you ni, need a friend. Ni, who you are wasting my time? This is not the place nor the time for talking transactions. If you want to sell me your warehouses, I shall be at my office tomorrow. That is the way out. Good night, Nehui. And so you can go to bed peacefully, John Eddington Pierre. You need have no worries. Nehui is a fool. Well, he should have been more careful. You've been hoping to get his warehouses for a long time. Now you will get them. If they are up for auction, I shall get them for a song. Oh, it's good to have money. It means power. It means everything. Now I am in a Look. position. Those marks on your leg. Eh? What is it? White marks. White... white spots? Now what could that mean? Well, it doesn't hurt. That is strange. John! You are going to bed early? Yeah, I felt a little tired, so... What did the man want? Oh, a fellow named Nihui. I had some business with him in the islands. He's like so many natives who think their little troubles must belong to all the world. He's in trouble. Then he may be dangerous. The natives are hot-tempered and revengeful. He cannot be dangerous. His business is wiped out. Be a good opportunity for me. You see, someday soon I shall be able to retire. <laughs> and there'll be no more talk of business. Oh, but this man, is he... <laughs> we'll have time only for, just for love and laughter, eh? <laughs> for a young man like you to be able to retire. It is wonderful. If only... If only... What, Marie? Well, sometimes I wonder if you should not be more... Oh, there you go again. I know. Be kind and helpful and this and that, eh? Now, now that would make a fine business. And you would eat crumbs of bread and live in a hovel. Now, how would you like that? Oh, you know, I could not stand that. Well, nor I. So, I am practical and we are happy. <laughs> hmm? Yes. Yes, I guess that is the only way. But maybe someday you will need others to help Marie, you. Marie, I think at times you speak only to annoy me. I have never asked another's help. I never will. I never will be so slow-witted or lazy as not to make my own way. Now, good night, Marie. I'm tired. Good night. Uh -oh. Marie! Yes? You did not kiss me goodnight. Somehow you seemed so hard and almost cruel tonight. Hard and cruel? Well, maybe it's your fault. What have I done? You allowed business to come into our house, and business is hard and cruel. Oh. Well, it shall not happen again. Good night, John. Good night, Marie. <laughs> And now this morning you can sit here in your office quietly, John Eddington Pierre, and wait until Nihue arrives. Yes, he will come hoping that I will save him. And maybe you will help him. There is no advantage in that. No advantage for you? For anybody. He will only lose everything eventually. He has no brains for business. Have you forgotten? Huh? What? Those white marks. Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. It's best to see a doctor. Then why are you waiting for Nihue? Think of yourself first. Yes. Yes, I will call, yes, Dr. Barnes. He, he will laugh at me. Or oh, it's only a change of climate or... Uh... Yes? There's a man here who says you're expecting him, a Mr. Nihui. Oh, yes. Send him in. Good morning, Mr. Pierre. Well, I guess you have thought things over last night, Nihui. I was hoping you Yes, might have... I have thought it over. Now I will give you $7,000 for your warehouse. But last night you said 10000 That was last night. And if you wait until there's a foreclosure and it is auctioned, you will get less. But that would mean I would have to make a trip that would be inconvenient at this time, so I will give you 7,000, and that is final. Then let them foreclose. Let it be auctioned. Now I would rather burn it to the ground and see you have it. Oh, my friend, you were hot-tempered this morning. Maybe eh? for reasons that someday you two will know about. Now listen, Nehui. What has happened to you is not my responsibility. That is your own doing. You will know someday. Are you threatening me? No. No, but there is justice, even though it is hard to say. You have everything any man can want, but you have no thought to help others. You can live with everything you have. Get out. But you will still have to live with your own memories. Get out, Always. I tell you.
You should not have put off seeing the doctor. You've waited a month, and now the swelling. Well, but it was important to make that trip, to get the warehouse. Now I shall take a good rest. The, the swelling will go down. Today, you're afraid. Fear is for fools. I have never been afraid. Ah, Dr. Barnes? Up here. Yeah. I haven't seen you in quite some time. Well, that's because I felt very well, Dr. Vance. <laughs> Good. In fact, I feel fine now. It is just a little uh, swelling in the leg here. It's nothing to worry about, but I, I thought... Well, let's, let's have a look at it. Uh -huh. Now, you see mm. these white spots. Now, yes. That's... Seems very odd. I noticed them for the first time about a month ago. Mm -hmm. What about the other ankle? Well, it, it's only this one. I, I don't imagine it's anything. I, I haven't even mentioned it to my wife, so it's you see, curious. I... Hmm? Frankly, I have only one suspicion, but I hope I'm wrong. As I remember, you told me you were born and spent some time in the islands. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what I'd like to do. I'd like to take a little piece of this white spotted skin and have a look at it under the microscope. It'll only be a minor matter. It's whatever you say, Doctor. You sit right down here. We'll just be a few minutes. Yeah. may be more serious than you suppose, John Eddington Pierre. Well, how could that be? Why, if it were anything serious, the doctor would have recognized it immediately. He works skillfully. He's a good doctor. There. He clipped off a piece of skin, and you hardly felt a thing. Well, no. He is a good doctor. See how carefully he adjusts the plate under the microscope? I have confidence in him. I know there is nothing serious. Strange. You don't feel any pain. Well, it was done so quickly. He knows what he's about. By Jove, Pierre, this is most unusual. The first time in my long years of practice. Huh? What is it, Doc? Pierre, I think you have leprosy. I have... I... No. No! Oh, Doctor! It... It can't be... Now you have all the instructions. There's no turning back. I, I will find a way out. You cannot. That week you spent in the hospital, you know for certain. The doctor said your case is incurable. You must follow their instructions. But it is so rare. Why did it have to happen to me? Those long years on the outlying islands, the lepers there. You always said you were not afraid. But I must find a way out. You don't want to injure anyone now. Marie, most of all. No. No, I, I shall tell her to pack my things. I shall touch nothing. John! Oh, where have you been? I got your message that you were called out of town, but uh, Please, why? do not come near me. Why are you wearing gloves? Yes. Well, can I not wear a little formality if I wish, Marie? Yes, but you are so strange. Or so distant. But uh, please! <laughs> well, uh, let, let us not stand out here. Oh, no. Oh, but of course. Uh, come in, darling. Uh, Marie, I, I have to go on a journey, a long journey, and I may be gone for some time. And it is something that must be done, and I must do it myself. So I, I, I want you to pack a bag with things I will need. And, well, please don't stand there gaping. Oh, but, John, I, I do not understand. Well, maybe, I... maybe someday you will. Someday maybe I shall tell you the whole story, but it must be as it is now. Now, now please, do what I ask. I am in a hurry. I've never seen you like this before. You see, Pierre, Marie does not understand. No one will understand. But I must do it this way. If you explain to her, she would want to go with you. No, she cannot do that. I have done enough to hurt people. I will make it clear. Somehow she will understand. Then you will meet the boat. Huh? Maybe. I don't know yet. You should have gone to the leprosarium near the Louisiana coast. No, 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 no. It is better to go far away where no one will ever know me. Where no one will learn and... Be glad. You have planned it well. There. There 
Where are your bags, dear? Mm -hmm. What is it? John, is it the police? Or you are in trouble with someone? No. No, no, I'm, I'm in trouble with no one. Oh, but why do you treat me this way? You have always been so kind and generous to me. I, I have tried to be, Marie. Will you please, please trust me now? Once before, you acted strangely like this. A night, some months ago, when that man from the islands called here. Has he anything to do with you going away like this? No, no, I... I do not think anyone but myself has anything to do with my going away. <sighs> oh, John. Oh, please, please. Oh, do you know what you're doing to please, me? Please, please, Marie. Now, don't come near me. Do not touch me. I have loved you so. And to think that I lived to see the time when you should treat me this way. Oh, no, Marie, listen. What I am doing, darling, I do because I love you. Believe me. Oh, then, John, why? I must go before it is too late. Goodbye, Marie. John. Oh, John, don't leave me this way. <laughs> Now you can drive out to the end of this wharf, set the car running, it will go over the edge, and it will be the last anyone will hear of John Eddington Pierre. No one will ever know otherwise. Your wife will say you acted strangely before the accident. All arrangements have been made with a lawyer. He will keep the secret. Well, there is no need for waiting. Better jump now. There is time. Maybe I will not jump. That would be a way to end it all. You cannot do that. Jump before it's too late. Are you a coward to take the easy way out? There's the end of the pier. Jump! So now, even the newspapers will say you're dead. Yes. You are legally dead, John Eddington Pierre. Now I can go to that island. Molokai. Molokai. And I shall bring with me all the bitterness and hatred that a man can store in his heart. You'd better be getting on the boat. Yes. There will be no more goodbyes. I had to come down to say goodbye, Pierre. I wanted you to know that... that I know how you feel, Doctor. Don't worry, it, it's all right. It's best this way. You'll be in your native climate. Even the authorities finally concede to that point. They have the most modern facilities. If there is a chance of cure for you, I think it will be at Molokai. Yes, uh, I can only hope. Hope and pray, Pierre. That is more powerful than Doctor's skills. Pray? Yeah, that's, that's one thing I have never learned to do. Well... Pierre, good luck to you. Thank you. And a pleasant voyage. <laughs> that is something for you to wish me, Doctor. A pleasant voyage. It is quiet and peaceful. Sitting peace, here. peace and quiet, a place of living death. You are bitter and broken, even after all these months. There is no longer courage in you. <laughs> no longer need for courage, only for patience to wait the inevitable end. You're still strong and healthy. It may be years, many years, wasted, if you do nothing. What? What is there to do? Fill up the empty spaces of other wasted years. Huh? What do you mean? How? You remember what Marie often said. Oh, Marie. She said many beautiful things. Here is another boat. They are the new ones. Every few months it is so. Yeah. And they are all lonely and broken too. Maybe you could help them. Go down to them. A word of kindness that will mean so much. Eh? Hey? Yes. That is something I can do. Johnny! Johnny, wait for me! Here, 
Yeah, little man, here, what's the hurry? Oh, he's all excited. He thinks it is excursion. Oh, oh, I, I should not have touched him. No, it is all right. He is the one. I have come to be with him. You? You are too young to bury yourself here. What? Well, uh, pardon me, pardon me. I, I have been bitter, but Please, this is... Please, move uh, away from here. Uh, there is lumber to unload. Yes, yes, I, I was... Oh, oh. you... Yeah. John Eddington Pierre, here? Yes. Nehui. It is me. Oh, I am sorry. Um, my friend, is there anything I can do? You? You call me friend? Why not? All here are Molokai, are my friends. You see, I have this new boat, so I ship around the islands, and once in a while I go as far as the States for cargo. So if there is any message... I... I'm glad it goes well with you, Nehui. Thank you. Uh, I will see you again later. I must get this lumber off now. Yes, yes. I am glad it goes well with you, Nehui. It is a year today. You're feeling better now. Oh, yes. Much better. You have found a new faith in yourself. I have found real friends and peace, what I have not known for a long time. Huh? Hello! Hello! Hello, who is that? Oh, you are hiding somewhere. Oh, okay. Oh, oh that big hill up to your cabin. Me, who is... Very... I did not know you were coming today. A special trip. You have it pleasant at the back of your house here? A garden now? Well, it keeps me occupied. Ah, and you <laughs> sit here and think out all your problems? <laughs> I don't have any real problems. Not like you anymore, Nihui. I have time to read and think. Yes, and sometimes to pray. I even have time for that, too. Oh, it is good. Now, what uh, brings you to Molokai? I did not see your boat. I have brought John! you... John! Oh, darling, it is you. Marie! Oh, no, hurry. No, this oh, is... Please, please, John, when you really came for me to tell me he had seen I you... I he... thought she knew everything about you. John, I had to come to you. I thought she must have known, and then... All right. All right. It's all right, Nihui. I... I understand. Well, excuse me, my friend. I, I shall see you again later. Thank you, Nihui. Yes, thank you. Uh, no, 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 Marie. Do not come close to me. After coming all this distance? No, you you cannot stay here. It is not right. John, hmm? sit down over here. There is something I want to tell you. I, I've often thought about you, Marie, and the beautiful things you so often said. Mm. You are becoming a poet. <laughs> it must be the blue waters and the green hills and the music of the soft wind in the trees. Yes, but this is a place of suffering, too. No, you cannot stay. It is only for us who are useless and broken. But I love you, John. And without you, I too am broken. And useless. Hmm. No, you were always one to see and speak such beautiful things, Marie. And why not? Eh? Yes. Why not? John, hmm? I can be happy here with you. Eh. You, you know you know what I was thinking, Marie. Oh, I can't imagine. You seem to have so many different thoughts now. No, I was thinking of an old poem I learned in boyhood. Yes. Well, maybe, maybe the words are not right, but it was something like this. The, the songs of childhood I've forgotten, but this I've learned so well. There is prayerful music in all things, even in a broken bell. This is Pedro de Cordoba again. The words of music and song often express our deepest feelings, like these brief verses. 
Home is where the heart is. You've often heard it said. Home is where the songbirds sing their sweetest overhead. Home is like the rainbow's end that beckons in the blue. Home is where your brightest dreams take root and all come true. And yet, it's more than just a place where people sleep and eat. A home that's real has something infinite and sweet. It may be just a cottage, or a castle with a dome. But if God dwells within its walls, it really is a home. Yes, when God is in a home, when daily family prayers are family practice, home is the happiest place in all the world because the family that prays together stays. Before saying goodnight, I'd like to thank Otto Kruger and Sigrid Gurry for their performances this evening. Our thanks to Mark Carney for writing tonight's play, to Max Tear for his music, and to Nick Kenny for the closing poem. This production of Family Theatre Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Betty Kroger as narrator, Jack Crucian, Charles Maxwell, and Maya Gregory. Next week, our family theater star will be Billy Burke in Once in a Million. Your host will be Hugh Herbert. This is Pedro de Corva saying good night and God bless you. This series of the Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program, by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at this same time when our Family Theater star will be Miss Billy Burke with Hugh Herbert as host. John Rustad speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.